This video is about solving radical equations, that is, equations like this one, that have square root signs in them, or cube roots, or any other kind of radical. When I see an equation with a square root in it, I really want to get rid of the square root. But it'll be easiest to get rid of the square root if I first isolate the square root. In other words, I want to get the term with the square root in it on one side of the equation by itself and everything else on the other side of the equation. If I start with my original equation, x plus the square root of x equals 12, and I subtract x from both sides, then that does isolate the square root term on the left side with everything else on the right. Once I've isolated the term with the square root, I'm going to get rid of the square root. And I'll do that by squaring both sides of my equation. So I'll take the square root of x equals 12 minus x and square both sides. Now the square root of x squared is just x. Taking the square root and then squaring, those operations undo each other. To work out 12 minus x squared, I'll write it out and distribute. 12 times 12 is 144. 12 times minus x is minus 12x. I get another minus 12x from here. And finally, minus x times minus x is positive x squared. So I can combine my minus 12x's, that's minus 24x. And now I can subtract x from both sides to get 0 equals 144 minus 25x plus x squared. That's a quadratic equation. I'll rewrite it in a little bit more standard form here. So now I've got a familiar quadratic equation with no radical signs left in my equation. I'll just proceed to solve it like I usually do for a quadratic. I'll try to factor it. So I'm going to look for two numbers that multiply to 144 and add to minus 25. Well, I know I'm going to need negative numbers to get to negative 25. And in fact, I'll need two negative numbers so they still multiply to a positive number. So I'll start listing some factors of 144. I could have negative 1 and a negative 144, negative 2 and negative 72, negative 4, negative 36, and so on. Once I've listed out the possible factors, it's not hard to find the two that add to negative 25. So that's negative 9 and negative 16. So now I can factor my quadratic equation as x minus 9 times x minus 16 equals 0. That means that x minus 9 is 0, or x minus 16 is 0, so x equals 9, or x equals 16. I'm almost done, but there's one last very important step, and that's to check the solutions so that we can eliminate any extraneous solutions. An extraneous solution is a solution that we get that does not actually satisfy our original equation, and extraneous solutions can happen when you're solving equations with radicals in them. So let's first check x equals 9. If we plug in to our original equation, we get 9 plus the square root of 9, and we want that to equal 12. Well, the square root of 9 is 3, and 9 plus 3 does indeed equal 12. So that solution checks out. Now let's try x equals 16. Plugging in, we get 16 plus the square root of 16, and that's supposed to equal 12. Well, that says 16 plus 4 is supposed to equal 12, but that most definitely is not true. And so x equals 16 turns out to be an extraneous solution, and our only solution is x equals 9. This next equation might not look like an equation involving radicals, but in fact, we can think of a fractional exponent as being a radical in disguise. 
let's start by doing the same thing we did on the previous problem by isolating. This time, we'll isolate the part of the equation that involves the fractional exponent. So I'll start with the original equation, 2 times p to the 4 fifths equals 1 eighth, and I'll divide both sides by 2, or equivalently, I can multiply both sides by 1 half. That gives me p to the 4 fifths equals 1 sixteenth, and I've effectively isolated the part of the equation with the fractional exponent as much as possible. Now, in the previous example, the next step was to get rid of the radical. In this example, we're going to get rid of the fractional exponent. And I'm going to actually do this in two stages. First, I'm going to raise both sides to the fifth power. That's because when I take an exponent to an exponent, I multiply my exponents, and so that becomes just p to the fourth equals 1 16th to the fifth power. Now I'm going to get rid of the fourth power by raising both sides to the 1 fourth power or by taking the fourth root. There's something that you need to be careful about, though, when taking an even root or the 1 over an even number power, you always have to consider plus or minus your answer. It's kind of like when you write x squared equals 4 and you take the square root of both sides, x could equal plus or minus the square root of 4, right? x could equal plus or minus 2 since minus 2 squared is 4 just as well as 2 squared. So that's why when you take an even root or a 1 over an even power of both sides, you always need to include the plus or minus sign. When it's an odd root or 1 over an odd power, you don't need to do that. If you had something like x cubed equals negative 8, then x equals the cube root of negative 8, which is negative 2, would be your only solution. You don't need to do the plus or minus because positive 2 wouldn't work. So that aside explains why we need this plus or minus power. And now p to the 4 to the 1 fourth, when I raise a power to a power, I multiply by exponents. So that's just p to the 1, which is equal to plus or minus 1 16th to the 5th power to the 1 fourth power. Now I just need to simplify this expression. I don't really want to raise 1 16th to the 5th power because 16 to the 5th power is like a really huge number. So I think I'm actually going to rewrite this first as p equals plus or minus 1 16th. I'll write it back as the 5 fourths power again. And as I continue to solve using my exponent rules, I'm going to prefer to write this as 1 16th to the fourth root to the fifth power because it's going to be easier to take the fourth root. Let's see, the fourth root of 1 16th is the same thing as the fourth root of 1 over the fourth root of 16. Raise all that to the fifth power. Fourth root of 1 is just 1, and the fourth root of 16 is 2. Raise that to the fifth power. That's just going to be 1 to the fifth over 2 to the fifth, which is plus or minus 1 32nd. The last step is to check answers. So I have the two answers, p equals 1 32nd and p equals minus 1 32nd. And if I plug those both in, 1 32nd to the 4th, 5th power, that gives me 2 times 1 to the 4th, 5th power over 32 to the 4th, 5th power, which is 2 times 1 over 32 fifth rooted to the fourth power. Fifth root of 32 is 2. Raise that to the fourth power, I get 16. So this is 2 times 1 16th, which is 1 eighth, just as we wanted in the original equation up here. Similarly, we can check that the p equals negative 1 32nd actually does satisfy the equation. I'll leave that step to the viewer. So our two solutions are p equals 1 over 32 and p equals minus 1 over 32. 
I do want to point out an alternate approach to getting rid of the fractional exponent. We could have gotten rid of it all in one fell swoop by raising both sides of our equation to the 5 fourths power. 5 fourths is the reciprocal of 4 fifths. So when I use my exponent rules and say that when I raise the power to the power, I multiply my exponents, that gives me p to the 4 fifths times 5 fourths is plus or minus 1 16th to the 5 fourths. In other words, p to the 1 power, which is just p, is plus or minus 1 16th to the 5 fourths. So that's an alternate and possibly faster way to get to the solution. Once again, the plus or minus comes from the fact that when we take the 5 fourths power, we're really taking an even root, a fourth root. And so we need to consider both positive and negative answers. This video is about solving radical equations, that is, equations like this one that have square root signs in them, or cube roots, or any other kind of radical. In this video, we solved radical equations by first isolating the radical sign, or the fractional exponent, and then removing the radical sign, or the fractional exponent, by either squaring both sides or taking the reciprocal power of both sides.